Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is an update on my bedroom tank. Just got home, I've been working late. Like literally I've been working long hours and stuff trying to get these projects finished. Um, but you can see a lot of my corals are closed up. Um, it looked like there was a little bit of something going on um, up here in the, what is it, in the Nero 5. So what happened was there was a guy or one of the sand, um, what is it, uh, sea cucumbers got shredded up right here again and it looked like it was um the purple one this time i had a black sea cucumber and i had a, a purplish reddish one and the black one got shredded up last time killed my yellow tang my original yellow tang and basically uh killed off um uh, not only my yellow tang but what, what was the other what was the other guy that got killed off there was another fish that got killed off with the yellow tang but um anyways uh so long story short came back home noticing there was some you know white spew coming out or a little bit of tissue loss you can see right there off the pc rainbow and you can see i was like oh shit, what the hell is going on here so um saw the sea cucumber getting shredded up right there it was stuck on the back of that pump and disconnected the pump dislodged him from the back area here and basically threw him out he was already kind of shredded up but his toxin must have just happened it was a good thing that i came back like as maybe sooner but i came back it's already around 7 30 p.m my time and uh you can see the polyps on the zoanthids are a little closed up so you can see things were just getting a little stunned you can see closed up right there so so in a situation like this when you know there's toxins in the water you know there's a situation going on i'm not going to jump to the conclusion of doing a water change i'm not just going to just start doing a water change start panicking and stuff what i always do when i notice that there's toxins in the water and there's an occurrence happening what you do is you just take some you know good old carbon and in this case i've i have extra bags of uh what is it chemi pure blue and it's basically like a gfo and, and carbon and all that good stuff all mixed together in one bag something like that so I put one here and then I put one there. Yeah, I got paint on me because I own a painting company. Um, so, you know, sorry about the, I just got home and just seeing the situation. So I basically put carbon here and put carbon here. I just did it 10 minutes ago. Uh, keep one of the old carbon bags because you don't want to actually shuffle and change out and take all the carbon out at once. You kind of want to keep things, you know, as stable and steady as possible when it comes to not trying to change anything too drastically so i'm not trying to upset the system because the system's already upset with the toxins so basically everything is working properly doing itself properly i can tell what's going on i know what's going on so carbon is the thing uh it's going to actually absorb a lot of that toxins a lot of that waste and i will be changing out this other bag but i'll do that tomorrow i'm gonna let these do do their thing and then I'll slowly switch these out and stuff, but you never want to do everything at one time. So I took out one bag, switched that out, put one bag in here, but I put another extra bag in this so-called chamber here where this uh, mesh bag is at. So there's one actually inside there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, lighting, yeah, so that's the original one. And slowly but surely starting to take away the toxins, starting to notice the zoas are starting to slowly open back up. So it is working. And I noticed that my PC rainbow is, um, tissue loss has stopped but you can see right there there was a little bit of it was it was going it was a good thing i came back the way it did you know the corals are a little unhappy right now you can see the polyps are retracted you know so nobody's really got their polyps out except for you know some of the montipora and stuff like that but other than that they're slowly starting to get their polyps starting to come back out again the red planet is doing fine but um, Jesus Christ, good thing I came back and I caught it. Doesn't look like this guy was doing too well. It looks like one of his heads are basically shrunken out. But, you know, um, the Duncans were actually really closed up. When I put in the carbon, they're starting to actually open up again. So whatever I did, what you know, basically it's not whatever I did. It's basically I came back at the right moment. He was getting crushed. He was getting, you know basically fucking shredded up by that freaking pump right there and uh you know it's just um 
I was just lucky to be able to catch this incident in time, put the carbon in there. Am I gonna do a water change? No, I'm gonna do my water change the next cycle, just like it is. I just did a water change just like a couple days ago. So, you know, I usually do my water changes on Saturdays, but I've been working late hours, working weekends, working this. Um, you know, we're basically all booked out into next year, put it that way. <laughs> And I'm just trying to get jobs done, trying to keep people, ha uh, trying to keep people happy, trying to keep my clients happy. Uh, but my tanks are all doing well. Tanks are all doing well. But Jesus Christ, I did not want to come to fucking seeing my SPS uh, start bleaching out or start STNing or RTNing. They would have RTNed, yeah, rapid tissue necrosis or whatever it's called. But um, oh man. So this pump is still off. This pump is still off. I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna clean it up before I reactivate it. You can see my um, torches are not too happy. But actually the gold torch is starting to come back up. They're all starting to open up little by little. So I can already see that the carbon is taking effect. It actually is working. So when you notice toxins in the water, when you notice a situation like this and stuff, one of the first reactions that you gotta do as a reefer is you know, not panic, but change your carbon or add carbon and just try to see if, if uh, you can remedy the situation slowly. Um, in some cases, doing a large water change or anything, you may upset the system even further because they're already stressed out as it is. What you want, you don't want to do is create more stress onto the system. So do things slowly, do things gradually. Uh, once you don't want to panic and stuff like that. I, I, my, I started, to be honest, started panicking and I was like, oh crap, just seeing this guy starting to spew some spit, you know, and look at him. As we're speaking, you know, as I'm speaking, you can see it's just, you know, it's slowly, it's not, it's not as bad. He's starting to, I don't know, get better. You can just see a little bit of stuff coming off him, but um, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. We're going to let this thing just settle itself out. We're just going to let it fix itself and it'll be fine. Um... Yeah, I can see the, I can see the polyps are already starting to want to open up and stuff. You can see they're already starting to open up a little bit. What's happening is that the, the carbon bags, the bags of carbon are slowly starting to, you know, take in whatever is being taken in, and hopefully the perfect skimmer is taking out more of that excess waste or whatever that's being taken out. It is bubbling a little bit more than usual, so you know, but it's do its job, and. Um, We'll come back in just a little bit and see if that remedy just worked and stuff. But uh, we'll be right back. All right, so it's been like about 25 minutes later. And um, what I did was I kind of moved the sand a little bit because uh, these Rassies here uh, were kind of scurrying up the sand bed. So since I took the pump out and cleaned it all up cleaned it with hot water i just took it into the sink area with some good old tap water and just cleaned it all up and then i just uh washed it off with some ro water but the circulation pump is back on and you can see the torch is starting to slowly open up and just like i said i moved these frags a little bit closer to the gear on the rocks so i'm kind of wanting these guys to actually attach themselves to this rock work uh this actually came from arlene's tank she's not doing good with this flower pot coral so um uh, i'm gonna see if this guy does a little bit better but you know with the toxins that just skewered in the water and float all over the place we'll see but uh you can see polyps are starting to open up little by little you can see these guys are starting to do better so we'll see what's going on and yeah, don't mind that guy over there you know he lost a whole head right there but it had nothing to do with this it was just i think it's a lighting issue there's too much shade on this side right here he's getting more lighting up there so it's gonna leave it as is but uh sps corals are starting to do much better you can still see a little bit of gunk right about there but other than that you can see I don't know if you noticed, you can see some polyps starting to come back out. Now, 
didn't change any water. What I did was basically took out that freaking, you know, I should have put something over these guys, uh, some sort of guard or, you know, when I have the sea cucumbers, I should have learned off the black one. I didn't think the purple one actually climbs up on the tank glass as high as he did. Usually they, he kind of goes up a little bit and then comes back down if he might be in the corner area, but he's never been around the pumps. But, you know, you'd think you'd lesson learned from the first time when you actually, when the black sea cucumber, cucumber actually killed off my yellow tank. And, um, yeah, you would think, you would think I would learn my lesson from that, but my workload and everything else and stuff sometimes, you know, is, so it is what it is but didn't do a water change i didn't do a water change all i did was just add the carbon like i said and we're just gonna let that do its thing um what i also did too is i took some sponge power and dropped some of this i don't know if you can see that but it says water cleaning and water quality is improved significantly you know the recovery of harm corals is highly improved so what i do is i actually put drops of this every three times a week two to three times a week but i dropped some of this now because of the fact that it does help with water quality so um looks like i caught everything in time you can even see the duncans are starting to slowly open up more and more so no water change just basically not doing one of those things where I'm going to stress out my corals even further by doing something drastically when, you know, if it was at a point when I saw all of these were basically starting to, you know, RTN and this and that and yeah, I, I have water, I would probably do some sort of a water change, you know, and add the carbon in there. But in this case and stuff, uh, I think I caught it on time, came back home, saw the guy being stuck in there saw that my light was blinking red i always take a look under the sump every time i come back i always look and yeah things will slowly start to recover i guess but we'll see in just a little bit so we'll come back in a few hours and see what's going on all right so let me um just show you the other tanks and stuff and just take a walk over here see in my office tanks doing well tanks doing good Everything's doing fine here, you know, beautiful. This guy's getting bigger, it's freaking uh, Antius, beautiful male. Yep, sold all the frags, guy came over and picked up a lot of stuff. Um, fragged out some of these chalices too, you can see I cut a piece there. He wanted some chalice and this and that, but um, Got some other people wanting to get a few things. I just got to start fragging out again. But um, other than that, this tank is doing well. And uh, might as well just take a walk over here. Oh man, I got to clean that freaking heater tray. The screen for the heater. Um, you can see this tank needs a cleaning. You can see all the buildup on the glass. Other than that, you know, tanks are doing fine. We'll probably just give the uh, glass a cleaning tonight. But, uh, clownfish are going fast. Yes, I know. Kona's hungry. You hungry, huh, Kona? Yeah. You hungry? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to feed you right now. Hold on. And, yeah. They're doing fine. And you see what he's doing right there? He's actually trying to pick at the, at the rose bubble anemone. You know, these clownfishes, they keep these rose bubble anemones in check. So I think what they're doing right now and stuff, they may start laying some eggs and, you know, they're going to start pinching in, trying to make a little a little bit of a clearance right there. And then they start laying their eggs around that rock work. But they don't allow these uh, anemones to move either. Um, these two, I don't know if you noticed in past videos, but they always stay in the same place. And this anemone right here, basically... This anemone is over 10 years old. I've had them as long as I've had these clownfish. So he's been shrinking in size, freaking bigger than my head. He's been almost the size of this whole section at one point. You know, it's just uh, he's been splitting. There's obviously one of his. 
or hers, whatever. I don't know what the sex is on an anemone, but um, yeah. So this anemone's been around for a while, and they always kind of like nip at the sides of the anemone. They kind of like, just like how you saw it was nipping like right here. They just make sure this anemones never move. If it starts to move, they kind of like force them back into place. But it's kind of weird, but you know, it's a, it's their home. They don't want their home to move out of place, I guess. But um, one for each of them, I guess. Beautiful. Anyways, tanks are doing fine. Tanks are doing well over here also. Um, yeah, I just gotta just clean the glass. But other than that, you know, tank systems are doing fine, guys. And just, uh, just gonna make sure that this system here is gonna be doing fine. So I'll come back in a little bit. I just wanted to show you the other tanks and, you know, I'm gonna feed my dogs and uh, slowly but surely, uh, it just looks like um, they're starting to open up a little bit more of the torches as I'm speaking to you guys. So yeah, we'll see. But I think I, I think I saved it. I think I, I, I think I solved the problem with this, with this system. So, um, I haven't done an alkalinity test yet, but I'll do an alkalinity test just to make sure parameters or anything has not gotten upset. Uh, so my pH level, everything seems to be fine. Right there, we're at 8.25 pH. You can see right there. So things are fine. So anyways, uh, I'll do an alkalinity test and see what's going on with that. But yeah whoo man did not want to come home to a crashed out tank uh and we'll just see how these tank we'll, we'll just see how this tank is doing in just a few all right we'll come back in a couple hours like i said all right peace okay it's about an hour later hour and a half and you can see look at that so those are starting to open up basically they're all opened up again torches are starting to slowly starting to get back to normal even this guy was looking a little really stunned it's starting to open up and you see there's more sway action the duncans are opening much more up and it's late night hours too the lights are starting to power down and you know you can see even that hammer right there So it looks like catastrophe uh, diverted or catastrophe, yeah, whatever. Uh, basically, we stopped the situation from happening. And it looks like things are starting to get back to normal. But um, definitely uh, caught this uh, negative reaction in time. See, these guys are starting to open up again. And they're starting to look a little bad and stuff. And you can see everybody's starting to open up and doing fine. So, save the reef tank from catastrophe and basically just letting the carbon slash chemi pure blue and do its thing. And tomorrow morning, I actually will put some fresher carbon in that other bag just like i said so looking at the sump i'm basically going to change that one out leave these two still in here and then i'll take this one out leave that one still in there while that one's more fresher so that's all i'm going to do and um yep i don't know if you can see down there too Let's see oh, there it is. i don't know if you can see that Dory's right there. Huh? It's so black you can't even see her. But I have not given my Dory away. It's still in the sump. There it is. See? There she is. She's hungry. I'm going to feed her. But still gonna have to look for a home for her. So, but other than that, tank is fine, guys. 
basically that's what I just wanted to just give you a little look at the situation I was just dealing with when I got home but you can see everything's fine fishes are fine so that's what it is I didn't want to overreact and start changing water I just wanted to just put some some fresh carbon in there see what it does and just like I said I dropped some sponge power in there also to help um, purify the water and you know water clarity and all that good stuff it said when I was reading that to you but other than that um, that's all I did a few drops of sponge power carbon and uh, no water change and catastrophe um, averted all right guys anyways peace and uh, just letting you know what was going on in this day and time in my reef tank definitely a quick look all right guys uh peace patience and stability all right patience and stability all right guys have a good one